Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out an early version of something called Tower of Babel by developer Blubber Quark Software. It is a procedurally generated atmospheric metroidvania puzzle platformer. Now I know that sounds like a lot of genre conventions all hitting you uh, as a big barrage all at once, but actually the premise is quite simple. We're going to slowly but surely work our way up a randomly generated tower doing our best to find and defuse whatever sorts of obstacles or impediments we happen to run into along the way. And we'll be uh, doing our best to uh, make any criticisms or notes worth mentioning since, like I said, this is still rather early uh, in development and the developers actually sought out uh, criticisms or opinions on how things are going so far. So, why don't we just jump right into things and I will get to it from there. Alright, so we find ourselves spawning into a rather sparse but interesting looking little world here. We've got lots of curly cues making up the art style. Uh, and it might bear mentioning, I am using the 360 controller to control this, and it was actually recommended by the developer in the README file that I do just that. I'm not really sure what's up with our character. It's a very strange-looking character. I can't quite make out where the arms or head or where... I mean, do I have a trunk? Is that... I don't know. I'm not going to worry too much about it. What I know, though, is that there's a character who seems to be phasing in and out of reality... Uh, standing here telling me to press A to jump, and I certainly can do that. Uh, jumping kind of comes naturally to me. The other options that I have here, I can use X to pick things up, I can hold right trigger to run, and I can press left bumper to bring out this little uh, horizontal or vertical rather map over on the left corner. And it looks like there's some sort of a splotchy element over here on the side of the screen. We're just going to kind of ignore that, I guess, because the pointer is telling us to go back in the other direction. Now, I have actually played enough of this to know what I'm supposed to do here, but I was just sort of playing dumb for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, I found it actually a little bit confusing, unfortunately, when I saw this. Even though I knew what it was asking for, I didn't understand that uh, it was telling me to place this eyeball on a pedestal there. It was actually just kind of, like, hard to see because that other text box was blocking it. Again, you know, this is early stuff, so it's not too big of a deal or anything. Just figured it'd be worth mentioning. Uh, and then that unlocks this shaded part that allows us to enter the actual proper tower, where we then go through a door and phase out of and back into reality. I quite like the art style of this game. It reminds me a little bit of, like, Ico or Shadow of the Colossus uh, to a certain extent. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, I know that there's some blocks that actually do patterns like this in their movement, so I guess there's maybe a little bit of a... A false proxying issue going on or something where it thinks I'm standing on one of those blocks but I'm not uh, no big deal I guess uh, just worth noting I suppose uh, so the thing about these shaded areas is they're kind of meant to block out stuff but also at the same time you can sort of just see the undercurrents of where you can hit into anyway uh, they're shaded slightly differently from the rest of this gradating texture pattern uh, so I don't know if it necessarily is supposed to make things impenetrable when there's the shading over them, and you don't also, like, unlock things the same way as you do in the very beginning with that eye. Uh, I mean, you do sometimes, but for the most part, we're always looking for these sort of adventure-style keys, uh, and then the goal is to bring these to locks, but they don't always address, like, all of the foggy areas before that, so you just kind of have to figure out how you can navigate them using your own, you know, mental prowess and dexterity by jumping into them a bunch of times. Uh, and you'll also run into a lot of these, just sort of like platforms that go off into nowhere. Now I guess it sort of goes to make this a bit more about exploration, because there's a lot of different avenues that you can go down that seem like they ultimately terminate uh, very quickly. And if you look at the map, well, it's actually very detailed, so that's good. It actually does kind of keep track of all that stuff for you. Uh, but the map's also extremely tiny, and you can't really see it to any degree that's largely all that helpful, aside from just, like, the big stuff. Uh, okay, so you can see there is a lock, and I do have the key that accompanies that lock. There's not always going to be that guarantee that you'll have the proper one. And it almost looks like I could just kind of fit up here, but no, I guess that's not the case. So let's drop the key on the lock, and all of those foggy areas disappear. Uh, just for a matter of science here, why don't we just go back down? I want to see if... Yeah, no, see, those foggy areas are still there. I was thinking maybe if you unlock the key at the top of each uh, section or segment of the tower, that maybe all of the prior foggy areas would then also dissipate, too. Uh, doesn't seem to be the case. Anyway, let's just continue to explore and fill out our map little by little. Uh, now, I noticed when I started this up, there was some weird resolution stuff going on. I figured that's right where it would be, because, you know, jumping and stuff. Um, there's two options. There's a windowed and a full screen mode in this particular game, and the windowed was, like, bigger than my monitor, which I had set to 1080. 
uh, and then the full screen also like was cut off in a weird way so I ended up having to uh, minimize my taskbar which also seemed very strange and it also just didn't like overlap my taskbar so I had to just make it not there uh, which you know resulted in some odd recording style because I had to actually use OBS to facilitate this one not that this is really any uh, issue that most people would be concerned with, but I figure it's worth mentioning uh, for anyone that feels a bit on the technical side about this stuff or at the developer, you know, well, they're probably going to implement more resolution settings anyway, but the ones we have right now are kind of messed up is what I'm trying to say. So what exactly is the relevance of this key right now? I can, I can make that go away, but I already could get up here anyway. Maybe the door was actually locked because now it just sort of automatically took me away. I guess, you know, doors being locked by keys, not exactly a new concept, right? All right, so let's continue on. Uh, in my prior run of this, and when I played, I didn't play for a ton of time, but I played long enough to get pretty high up in the tower, and I noticed a lot of very repetitive level structures, and again, this is like, it's all randomized, so there's not really any control that the developer has over that, but I think there might just not be very many templates thus far, uh, and I found one particular segment of tower that repeated, I think, about six or seven times in a row. So, you know, just bad luck. Uh, again, no no real ill will there, I'm sure. And I don't know what carrots do. I've never been able to reach one of these yet. Um, but yeah, I just figured it go worth mentioning. Uh, I love the idea of this, and if this is all... Oh, God, here we go. If this all gets completely implemented, uh, all of the elements that I'm sure the developer has planned, I think this could actually be quite special... And I really do like the ambient feel of this all. It's very kind of just chill and relaxing and mysterious at the same time. Yeah, there's this... Oh, here we go again with the wobbling. Uh, but there's this really just kind of relaxing, uh, twinkly guitar playing in the background. There's a little bit of air, actually, that you can hear in the ambience uh, in the mix of the guitar. And that sort of gives me this feeling of everything's just kind of laid back. Uh, and you can take your time and explore all you want, and, you know, I kind of appreciate that. Oh, that's strange. I'm not sure why I didn't jump there. Uh, I think that was probably my own fault, but I don't know. It seemed strange to me. Um, so we're just going to keep on going and retrace those steps. There's a lot of instances where these these little cubby holes on the sides just sort of immediately end, and you don't really know you have much time to, like, need to step back from that ledge, my friend. Uh, and if you'll pardon that reference there... Uh, it just sort of ends up in you occasionally just leaping off of things without even meaning to, and, you know, I guess that's part of the experience, but it's also not, like, my favorite part when you just lose progress for basically no reason. Um, I'm also, I have, I have a feeling there's going to be more items and things that maybe will make some of the decisions that are the way they are right now make a little bit more sense later. Is this, I think that seems like one of the ones we just saw, but it had, like, a cover over it before. And is this where I just was a second ago? Alright, well, might as well just keep going. If you want to really be all out with this thing, you can just kind of skip a bunch of parts of it, and then eventually, well, what happened to me was I ended up pretty far ahead, and there were, oh, see, we've got a lot of repetition here again. Uh, but I ended up with about three different keys, and none of them unlocked anything that I could find, so I'm pretty sure there was one of the proper ones somewhere, but I, d I didn't run into it, and then I kept falling off uh, the ledge, which is a little frustrating. Uh, I guess when you get further up, there just tends to be more that you can go and look for. Uh, or, again, it was just completely random chance. I'm not sure to what degree randomization actually comes into play here. I'm sure it comes in enough, uh, but, like, whether or not things continue to escalate or if there's some sort of hierarchical level of randomization as you get higher in the tower to lead to sort of a, a tapered experience where things would be uh, somewhat different in the beginning, middle, and end of your experience versus just... Uh, certain parts of it But again, I'm just I'm digging the the atmosphere the art style the whole the whole vibe of the thing Which definitely makes me able to not really take much issue when it's a bit of a slow climb I also just really appreciate that you can see that map and just see quite how far you've come from the beginning I mean already this is looking like a pretty formidable tower even though we've just been taking it one screen at a time uh, it Didn't really feel all that formidable none of these challenges have been particularly difficult uh, and there are some outliers that happen on, like, the outer edges of the tower that have been a little bit more tricky in terms of actually uh, executing platforming stuff. I wouldn't necessarily categorize this as one of those. Uh, Alright, so now we've got two keys, and I'm not sure what to do. I mean, we've got one over there that I could grab, but I don't know if I'm going to need that lock or what, so I guess I'll just grab it and bring it back over here. 
And also, sometimes you can't tell the difference between the foreground and the background, because like over here, I guess it's a little bit more obvious, but then you end up with these blended looking tiles that are up in the ceiling, and you kind of lose track of those, because uh, I've run into those a couple of times. It's caused me to clip and then fall down, which is a little frustrating. Okay, so those actually you can jump through. I've had ones where they weren't actually jumped through, oh, like that. Not really sure what I bumped into there, but that could definitely spell a little bit of disaster. Uh, you know, not serious disaster, because obviously it wouldn't take me very long to get back up, but uh, if we were very high and I couldn't get back over fast enough, I guess that would be an issue. I'm envisioning that as things get more and more elaborated on and developed, that maybe there would be an item that could give you, like, a second chance if you fall off uh, to be able to, like, quickly clip over to the next ledge or something like that. Uh, that way you don't have to worry quite as much. Just sort of like a second chance bubble. Because uh, if you don't have a ledge that sticks out for quite a while, you could fall a ways. I mean, there's plenty of places where you can jump back in, but at the same time, if you fall at the wrong angle or, or things just aren't really uh, laid out for you in a very accommodating way, you can actually spend quite a bit falling and then have to retrace all your steps, which, you know, none of these challenges, like I said, are all that hard. It's more just it boils down to do you have the patience to do it. And then if you end up in a position where you're not really sure where you're going anyway, and you don't really seem to be finding the right key that you need, well, I guess that could be a bit on the frustrating side, too. Uh, what's going on over here? Yet another key, and I have not found a lock for quite a while. I'll just take the most recent key, and we'll hope that I can remember where I left that last one. I guess I could just bring it back over to the main area of the tower, right? Because it's not like it's going to vanish or something. And I suppose if I was feeling particularly cheeky, I could try to, like... Oh, I forgot which is the one I just picked up. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Although that kind of defeats the point, doesn't it? Uh, Alright, we'll put that one there. Grab that one, put that one there. It'd be really handy if it showed all the keys on your map in like a big right, uh, bright dot or something. It, you know, keys that you've discovered anyway. But now that we've seen a number of these kind of Fog of War misty sections, like I'm still not really sure I understand what the relevance of... Oh, look, it's bluer here. That's nice. Can you see that actually change if I fall here? Oh yeah, you can. Figured it'd be worth doing for the sake of science. So there is actually some hierarchical progression, at least in terms of the background art. Another dead end. I do wish there was a little bit more in the way of like actual exploration. Because uh, it's, it's very easy to just keep going up and up and up and not really look at the sides. Because look how long I've gone without running into anything stopping me. Uh, you know... The developer intended this to be mostly a slow-paced exploration experience, but I could also see this being a lot of fun if you wanted to try to speedrun it or something like that, too. And I know I've been bringing this up in a lot of episodes, but I guess, you know, it's a thing that I talk about a lot. So now we got to go back down and go get the uh, squiggly key. Uh, also very easy to forget what the last lock you might have needed was. And that could be a little bit frustrating. If I really wanted to, I guess I could just fall. Uh, oh, well, like I did there. Uh, but just fall on the outside edge and then try and pull myself back over when the time comes. I could see there being some really interesting puzzles and such to this. Uh, I guess I'm imagining Zelda-style stuff. Or, you know, block-pushing mechanics. Wait, oh, okay, I was worried for a second that still wasn't the right key. It looked like it was maybe mirrored. No matter. Okay, so we're actually, we're getting somewhere. This tower's looking a little bit tall. Let's see what's over here on the side. Why don't I leave this key, just in case I run into another one over on the other side. Uh, uh, uh is that a key? I don't know what that is. It looks like a chalice, actually. Alright, chalice -y looking object. Let's bring that over, then. Uh, the character, by the way, controls pretty much fine. I don't really have any criticisms about that. I, I mean, I, I hold run constantly, so maybe having, like, a permanent sprint option would be cool. Uh, but, you know, I'm used to doing that from Meat Boy anyway. And we've got a new color in the background, and we've also got what looks to be a slightly more complex platforming situation where we might actually have uh, this whole thing spanning two screens, which is the first time I think I've run into that. I'm wondering, too, if they plan on introducing uh, any kind of combative elements or... Uh, traps or things that could actually cause you to lose progress other than simply falling. I kind of hope they stay to the pure idea of simply just climbing the tower, but I also understand how tempting and, like, easy it would be to want to introduce more elements like that. I just like the purity of the concept where it's just, that's strictly all you concern yourself with, 
And really, if there's going to be any challenge, make it be more about exploration or uh, puzzle solving that you could take on at any time period that you choose. Uh, I really do value the fact that this game is... It sort of makes it important that the tempo and the ambience go hand in hand. Uh, so if you start to get rushed at a certain point, well, I think that would introduce a new level of stress that might be a bit more frustrating. Oh my goodness, look, we've got actually some new stuff going on up here. I'm interested. You've got my attention. I hadn't made it this high before, so I guess I didn't notice that there would be things like this to see. And all of a sudden, it looks like we've got some actual platforming to do. Look at that. I do like some of that. Oh, careful. Clipping up through... Oh, what's this? Is, am I going to get a double jump or something? What does this arrow do? Can I pick this up? Oh, I can pick that up. Oh, it just goes in my inventory permanently, so now I have a double jump. I get it. That's cool. That is certainly going to complicate things, or at least make them a little bit more interesting, for sure. Uh, there was definitely some monotony going on before, but if we have actual double jump ty uh, type stuff going on, that's pretty exciting. And it also kind of answers one of my questions, to some degree anyway, that maybe the emphasis is going to stay on exploration. Now, what's up with all the keys that I haven't needed? I've had a lot of them, and I wish I could just put them all in a key ring and carry them up with me. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be possible. Can I cheat through this? Uh, actually could. It's a bit of a strange comparison, but this is for some reason reminding me a little bit of uh, A Boy in His Blob in that sort of uncharted territory element. Now I'm starting to wonder if I can... Ah, I can! I can actually get up above. And I don't know how much that's going to help me, but maybe I can kind of cheat my way ahead. I do like sequence breaking, as I'm sure you're well aware. Uh, where do I fall here? I've got a cross to there, and then one up there. Cool! We skipped ahead, guys. Are you not excited? Uh, and then we've got this repeated format again, but now I could potentially, oh no, I could potentially scale the outside of the tower too, which actually adds a whole new element to it. Not that I really need to, but I seem to be a glutton for punishment for whatever reason. Well, maybe we won't do that, actually. It seems to not be getting me anywhere. But now that I have double jump, I feel a lot more versatile. Um, how about, oh, that whole thing is a solid block. Okay. You know, I can see it now. I just wasn't really paying that close attention, apparently. Oh, jeez. Falling through the whole thing again. There's no real way to see what's coming up, like, before you jump into it, so, you know, it's kind of a strange thing. I'm not really sure if there should be a solution to that, either. Oh, no. You're kidding me. The key that I found, like, ages ago I need to bring up here? That's gonna be the end of this video, I would say, because I don't see myself going all the way back down and finding that. I have no idea where I left that sucker anyway. It was several background colors back... Ugh. Okay, well... I certainly hope they add some dots on this map so I can find the keys I found already more easily, or just carry them all with me at the same time would be great, too. Uh, just make right bumper and inventory and then just pop them all together. You know, you, you want exploration. I don't think you want to have people retracing their steps over and over again when it's really unnecessary. Unless maybe there's just another key around here with the same format. Or maybe I could just, like, skip it entirely? Eh, well, I don't see that happening with this setup. Anyway, that was Tower of Babel. Pretty cool game. Definitely recommend you go give it a download and check it out. It is free. There's going to be a link in the description. Uh, feel free to chime in and let me and the developer know what your comments and criticisms are in the section below. That's what it's there for. Make good use of it. I do read all the comments, by the way, in case anybody ever wonders... Uh, so if you write something, unless it just doesn't show up for whatever reason, I've had that happen where YouTube just doesn't notify me of something. Uh, I usually pretty much read everything, though. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like. It helps me out a whole bunch. And then come on back again tomorrow. There are new episodes of Indie Impressions that go up every single day. So if you enjoy what you saw today, feel free to subscribe and come on back. There'll be plenty, plenty more for you. So hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a fantastic night. Talk to you all later.